Hello and welcome to episode 39 of When the Flames Go Up, the TFC podcast with me, Will Brown. Uh, got to talk about the elephant in the room, unfortunately. Um, so we do we do end up talking about Wildstone at home quite a lot, actually. Quite annoying, uh, the 2-0 defeat. So the panel of myself, Ian and Charlie will discuss that before moving on to where do we go from here? What do we need? And such things as how on earth do we get anything at Gateshead? And are any of us optimistic? You'll find out. Um, the recording does cut out quite abruptly at the end, so just brace yourself for it. We, I mean, as I say we, I thought there was more time on the record. There was not. Therefore, Ian gets cut out. Might leave it in. So, uh, you know, just watch out for that. You might just be abruptly ended. Um, maybe you can finish Ian's sentence and email atfcpodcast at gmail.com uh, with your findings. Anyway, enjoy the episode and up the shots. So, older shots, two points off the drop zone in 17th place after a defeat at home to Wildstone. 2-0 uh, was the end result. Finished with nine men after Dan Ellison and Aaron Jones both red carded in the final 10 minutes. Um, both second bookable offences. And uh, yeah, a, a penalty at the very end of the first half um, put put Wilson ahead. Um, and then they capitalised on a James Henry mistake at the end to make it 2-0. Um, and it fe- always felt like it was probably coming. Um, we've got Charlie and Ian on the pod tonight. Charlie making a return for the first time for a while. Uh, Charlie, how did you see the game? Um, I, I don't ask, where do you rank this in uh, worst home defeats? But um, yeah, how did you see it on Saturday? Hey there, Will. Um, great to be back. Um, first time back on the pod since uh, since just before the season started when we are all full of uh, pre-season optimism. Um, so you can tell it's desperate times when I'm back. Um, yeah, I really wanted to to come on come on today and and, and talk about that performance because... I think before the game, the feeling was that this match would be a real indication of where we are this season. Are we going to be looking to kick on and, and climb the table after a bit of a difficult period? Or are we really going to be looking over our shoulders um, at the teams behind us like, like Wildstone? And unfortunately, I think it was the latter. Um, it was a it was a really, really poor performance, in my opinion. Um, we've had We've had some challenges recently going forward, obviously, with scoring goals. Um, but I also think our defence looked looked very, very shaky and vulnerable as well. Um, there seemed to be a real lack of confidence. And it seemed like we were up against a team that was growing in confidence. And after the first five or ten minutes, where I think we started OK, they really took control of the game. And 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 once they took the lead, it felt like there was only going to be one winner. And I think Wellstone, sadly, were very, very comfortable. Um, in terms of where it ranks, it was... It was really down there in terms of home performances over the years. It was, it was, it was, it was not good at all, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. There's plenty to tap into for this game. Um, yeah, Wildstone's first league away win, um, coming after their first away win um, last week in the FA Cup away at Grimsby. Um, so we were we were slightly optimistic going into this one, but um, yeah, the the performance overall has. Uh, Dampen spirits. Um, Ian, how did you find Saturday's game? Not good at all. Couldn't find any positives from it at all. I was quite fearful when I was on last week where I felt we've had too many of these games lately where we think, yes, team near the bottom, chance to get back on form, find some confidence, etc. And then we've failed to score. We've conceded two goals. We've gone down to nine men. You know, nothing went right at all. And we're in a lot of trouble, unfortunately, mainly because we just can't seem to create anything. There there was zero shots on target. And I, I don't know what we're going to do um, because every week the drop zone gets closer and we're in no sort of form. One win since the end of August. Obviously, it's selective stats mining, but people love to, say five wins in 25 I think whatever it is that goes back to York in March and whilst I don't like it unfortunately that's true and um, yeah big problems you know Jones for example you know we haven't been thrilled with his 
form lately, but you know he's going to have to miss a couple of games, and we, I think we're going to miss Ellison as well at the back with with his suspension. Yes, yes. So, I suppose we, we can start by talking about the uh, the, the decisions for those uh, for the the penalty in the first half and and the eventual um, red cards. I'm not sure there's any any point covering Aaron Jones's. Uh, they're just two yellow cards, um, and he should be off. We did mention last week that one of Jones, McHomer, and Theo being in a starting lineup means you are kind of susceptible to having a red card in the team. Um, and lo and behold, Aaron Jones got in on the act um, in the in the final minutes. Um, yeah, Charlie, thoughts on the thoughts on the penalty first, and and then your your view on the kind of second yellow for Ellison for the the handball. Sure. So, so I wasn't actually at the game. Uh, I watched uh, watched the match on TV. So the only view I've had has been obviously what was shown on on the TV. So I didn't get an East Bank view or anything like that. But at the time, I was quite shocked by the decision. Um, I felt like there was minimal contact, and it, it did very much look like the striker Reed had had very much bought bought the penalty, which is which is probably correct. However, looking back, I think Magoma has to do better and he's he's given the referee a decision to make and you, you can see from the replays that he is is pulling on Reed's shirt. So whilst I think it probably was soft, uh, it's definitely the type of penalty where if Byron was running through on goal and that happened, we'd be claiming for and hoping for. Um, I just think it was it was it was poor defending um, and, and that shirt pull shirt pull was unnecessary. Um, soft penalty in my opinion, but can definitely see why it was given. Yeah, we definitely want that if if that was in front of the East Bank or a busy away and we'd definitely all be screaming for that one, I think, if it happened. And credit as well, I suppose, to Reed that he's a bit of nice gamesmanship there that perhaps we've lacked in recent recent times to to draw the foul, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I think I thought immediately from well from the East Bank I thought it was a, a pen. Just because of the way I think from behind you kind of saw them kind of cross Cross paths. I was like, well, he's clearly like kicked a bit of the leg as well. I know they were kind of grappling a little bit with each other, um, but then yeah, watching the replay, I do, it's, he has he has gone down um, at basically the perfect time. It's 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 brilliant work, really. He's got the got the shirt. Magoma lets go of the shirt, then he goes down <laughs> and right in front of the line the lino as well. Um, brilliant performance, well done. Uh, it seems to be a bit of a late, a late decision from the referee as well, from from what I was watching. So I initially yeah. thought it hadn't been given and was obviously relieved, and then then it seemed to happen in slow motion that they that he gave it. But yeah, didn't, didn't yeah, see what it was. I think there was a, yeah, kind of a, a conversation between the liner when he, he he kind of waved above his head, and then the ref kind of ran towards him, and gives it all this kind of press in the ear um, to make it. I don't, I don't think that helps at all. That doesn't. I can't make it any clearer, surely. But um, yeah, that seemed to be. Um, when he made the decision, um, yeah, and then I suppose moving on to the uh, the, the second yellow for Ellison, I, I can't remember the actual first yellow, but I, I seem to remember it just being a trip, or a, I can't remember it now. Um, what do you think, Ian? Yeah, the, the first yellow was fine. It fine as in seemed the correct decision. I think it was one where he was trying to take one for the team. That it was one of those where I think he gave away a foul where it was probably worth doing, um, but. In the long run, it wasn't worth it because when he had this handball, um, that meant the second yellow for him. My thought at the time on first look was, come on, that, you know, he's got to do something with his arm. I just didn't think that was handball at all or deliberate handball, whatever it is that needs to be the second yellow. So I was very, very annoyed with the decision. But I should be clear that the decision for the red or two yellows in this case did not have any impact on the game at all in terms of the end result. Yes, definitely, definitely worth <laughs> worth adding. This was this was the eighty first minute um, when we were still one 0 down and not creating anything. So um, yeah, didn't we actually played better with ten men? To be honest, I don't know. I don't know what happened. <laughs> we we seem to. I think some of our best moments have been attacking. Have been with ten men. We at least look like we're on the front foot. Like we're we've you know got a point to prove. Yeah, I mean, maybe with 11, last 10, we could have gone for it more so than we did, perhaps. You know, that's uh, we'll never know on that one. Mm. But, um, yeah, we just felt so toothless prior and afterwards, yeah, we threw men forward because it's 1-0. You've always got a chance if something just suddenly comes off. But, 
yeah, it felt like it had no bearing on the outcome at all. Yeah, I felt yeah. I felt sorry for Ellison actually when it happened because he was left exposed, and I think the only reason it was really given as a second yellow because I don't think he could have moved his hand out of the way. It's just the fact that the ball was was prodded through to their striker, and I think the striker was being covered, but it looked like there was a chance for them to get in on goal. So I, I can see why the second yellow was given in that instance, but you, you can't really blame Ellison at all for it. He, he couldn't have he couldn't have done anything there. I don't no, no. Yeah, he probably honest, came away with quite a good a half decent performance in that central role. Um didn't really do anything wrong. Um yeah, just a sh- yeah, it's a shame we have to lose him for for a game now as well. Um just when we got him back, you know, extended the loan until January and then this which just seems to be a theme of the season and, and yeah, as we've mentioned before earlier, Aaron Jones as well. I mean, cannot get a run in the, the team at all through injury or suspension or not not being fit enough when he comes back. I mean, it's yeah, it's uh, it's another <laughs> another um, thing to note down against this team. Um, yes, where do we where do we go from here? Um, recruitment has been something that's come up quite a lot, and and the kind of team overall is the squad strong enough? Have we built a team of quantity over quality? This kind of thing. Um, where where do we go now, Charlie? Do we need do we need that? God send striker to come in and score us twelve goals this season and prop us to maybe I don't know where do we dream thirteenth maybe <laughs> I'd snap your hand off for thirteenth at the moment. <laughs> um, look, I think we always thought we always knew this season would be would be tough on the recruitment side of things. I think a lot has been made of the loss of Top Lash and Stokes, which probably have been the two biggest losses. But if, if you actually look at who else we don't have this season from last season, you can include the likes of Haji Minoga, Glover, Ollie Harfield's obviously out injured, really key players. And then maybe a couple of other players who divided opinion quite a lot last season, but I also think we're missing a bit, are the likes of Kean Harris and Kwame Thomas, who maybe last season, me personally, I didn't think the likes of Kean Harris and Kwame were necessarily fantastic footballers, but they gave us something very different to the team. Um, Kian obviously with the ability to to play out comfortably of the back and then Kwame obviously the ability to hold up the ball win headers and occupy defenders and I think that second option with Kwame Thomas is the type of player we're really really missing at the moment uh, I know everyone wants a 20 goal season striker to walk through the door tomorrow uh, but I think that might be might be an impossibility however we definitely need a different option up top um, just to have a different way of attacking um, you know, going back to the game uh, at the weekend against Wellstone, they, they were quite a different team. So I think the Wilson we've seen in previous years, they were a lot more direct. And I think a striker like Alex Reed has made a really massive difference for them. If if I was Tommy, that would be my priority right now. I'd be looking to bring in a striker that can occupy defenders that's a bit different to to Barham and, and Haddy. Yeah, and I guess the other the other thing is trying to, provide some sort of service for the other striker if you're going to play two up top I mean the Barham and Barrett um, kind of combination up top admittedly it worked I think it worked and looked quite good against Bradford because it allowed Barrett to drop into space but from home I mean I don't think either of them really faced the goal at any point during their what 55 minutes that they had on the pitch Uh, Gandalf was the same didn't really face the goal at any point um I think that that's 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 one of the the many problems. Um, how do you see it, Ian? The kind of recruitment and what we need to, what do we need? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the striker is actually okay, but it's the creation for the striker that early in the season we had some individual goals from Barrett, you know, Boston away, where he basically seized on a half chance, and it was like I said, August we were free scoring. You know, Maidenhead, Oldham, Forest Green scored loads of goals. And then since then, scored very few. And they've been out of nothing. You know, Barrett at Boston, etc. And I think it's six times in ten or something like that that we failed to score. And we need somebody to create some chances. You know, I think it's Ash, I think, in the WhatsApp groups had like three games in a row. Like no real chances to speak of. Three league games in a row. Um, so for me, it's the 
the creativity, whether that's somebody just to sit behind the striker, something for to create a chance for Bar- Barham or Barrett or what, whatever. I think we all sort of thought Henry was going to create quite a bit, but he's found it harder as well in recent weeks. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we can give him the ball pl- uh, plenty. I mean, I, I just I just find we we aren't yeah we aren't ever kind of going moving forward in a in a flowing fashion. I, th- I think I mentioned I don't know if I mentioned on the pod, but in comparison to last season where we had Tolaj and, and Stokes that could on the turn get past the man and then defenses were scrambling backwards, uh, that Wildstone was set in their their back five the entire game and didn't have to really do anything. They just dropped off. Mariapa just sweeped everything else up and I, t- I don't think they broke a sweat and that's not the first time I've said that about a defence that's come to an older shot. They they didn't really need to, um, yeah, break a sweat. Um, yeah, because it started like that with Rochdale and I think at the time we were like, oh, Rochdale were very good and we were not at all worried. But since then, it's felt like almost every game that we've played at home has been like that. Yeah, yeah, barring We're the... making it far too easy that, yeah, that I'm sure pre-match everyone's like, oh, the wreck, old shot, EBB, whatever, tough place to go. We're going to be in for a tough time here. And then they're probably at the end of it thinking, well, what was all that about? It was <laughs> it was pretty, pretty easy afternoon. Yeah, yeah. All you got to do is deal, deal with about six corners, um, which, I, I mean, no older shot defender has got anywhere near this this season. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> We've had a couple off the bar, I think. You know, Macomer off the bar, but they get. I mean, they're massive. I mean, I know Wilson had a couple of really big boys, but getting nowhere near corners. Yeah, well, Wilson dealt with them very easily. That was another point from from Saturday, which was yeah. a concern. They don't look like scoring in in any way. Um, so. And that was even with their first choice goalkeeper going off injured in yeah. the first half with an innocuous hamstring pull or something like that. So we had a, a kind of reserve goalkeeper in who wasn't expecting to play and uh, somehow managed to conspire not to, <laughs> not to not to test him at all. So he had an easy day. Um, a nice clean sheet to take home for him. Um, what else have we got on this uh, this list? Uh, yeah, the only thing I did mention it was obviously we, we're, we're talking about Old Shot's terrible performance, but uh, worth saying that Wildstone's kind of pressing, although it just kind of blitzed us. I mean, they any any free time that our centre half had on the ball was cut down significantly. I think they they did it all game as well. I thought maybe second half, come on, they they've got a tire. Can't keep making these short five yard sprints to close us down all game. Um, but I think yeah, Kreshmar and Reed. Um yeah, the pressing. So yeah, fair play to them for for, for continuing to do that. And that that seemed to be yeah, uh, overawing for for our team, which obviously Charlie just said earlier, it kind of looked like we lacked confidence. I think we were ex- maybe expecting an easier um, opponent than we actually got. Um, I certainly was when I was standing in the East Bank, which was probably why why my ire was was so uh, so pointed at the end. I even, I even booed at the end of that. That's, I, I don't think I've booed an old shot game for a long time, <laughs> like a few years. I was like. Boo! Yeah, I mean, it came out a bit raspy. I was a bit like, no, nah, come on, don't embarrass yourself. But, it was uh, definitely yeah. a booable performance, so I, I do not blame you for that at all. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I think they I think Wilson were good. Um, maybe we look, made them look better because of our ineptitude. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought they played well, but yeah, we just we just offered, offered absolutely nothing. Mm. I guess and this the, the worry really showed. I think um, really showed. Especially in the back three, mm. I guess the the worry. Obviously, we're we're sitting in seventeenth um, at, at the moment, but I think I think I'm pretty sure I've said that about Ebbsfleet. I was like, no, they, they actually, you know, created some chances. Yeah. They were decent. Wildstone, decent. Filed, decent. They're all below us at the moment. Uh, I mean, it's yes, not not looking great <laughs> um, for now. I think I think it's one of those like Ebbsfleet. Yeah, haven't really improved. You know, they've made the change from Searle to whoever, but they haven't really improved. But it feels like just about everyone else, you know, if we give it six weeks, we carry on as we are, you know, we're going to be probably 23rd if we're not careful. Yeah, 
and I think that yeah, the, the main worry is is those that goal scored column um, as well because other teams are catching us up. Whereas before we were kind of like ten goals ahead, and you're like over the course of the season, maybe that will, and you know, we'll be closer in games and be able to win games. Um, but they are quickly catching us up because we are not scoring at all. Um, well, I'm gonna, let's move on to the next the next challenge. Um, Ultra are currently playing Bashley away in the Hampshire Cup. Um, hopefully, you've got an update from me in the intro potentially. Um, Hopefully a good update that we've won. But a strong lineup is is out there at the moment. Um, but on Saturday, the, the shot's in National League action again. Um, it doesn't get any easier. It's Gateshead away, who are in fourth position. Um, they lost manager Rob Elliott to Crawley at the start of October. Um, they've got Carl Magne in, who um, I think he's had like two spells with Gateshead playing. So he's probably a, he's a face I know. Big, big centre-half, I think. Well, Sent defensive mid, can't remember. Uh, so I presume they'll be continuing exactly the same way as they did when uh, Williamson left about two, two or three years ago. Um, and they've also replaced Dejon Brown, who I presume presume was their top goal scorer last season with Owen Osaini from I believe it was like Russell Athletic. Don't know why I guessed Russell Olympic. I'm not sure. Um, he's the top goal scorer with seven so far in the league. Um, and then the other two, the kind of two main names that we'll, we'll remember are Robbie Tinkler, captain, and Regan Booty in midfield. Uh, Charlie, how are you feeling ahead of this one? Um, not confident as you can, as you would probably expect. Um, I think you know, based on based on recent performances, lack of creativity from us. Um, this is probably the last the last league opponent that you would probably want. Gate said away from home. Always a very good footballing side. Um, obviously, excellent home form this season as well. So, yeah, n- not not confident at all, um, especially given the strength of the side we seem to have picked tonight at Bashley. Uh, I think it's another another quite quite a big ask to have an almost full strength side play tonight at Bashley in the Hampshire Cup, and then travel up to Gateshead at the weekend and and go again against you know one of the strongest teams in the division. Um, especially with the couple of suspensions we'll have as well. Um, so yeah, not 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 confident at the moment, but stranger things have happened, um, and hopefully we can see a see a bit of a reaction. But not not feeling too good about things at the moment. Yes, that's fair. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, home form um, of Gateshead. Um, I think they have won seven out of eight so far. Um, they've lost one, which was against Forest Green Rovers. Um, in that seven, they beat Barnet. Uh, Barnet Yeovil and Solihull. Um, so uh, yeah, as always, they are they are strong at home. Um, Ian, how do you see Saturday? Yeah, I'm not op- optimistic, but equally, this is order shot. So you know, getting something at Gateshead w- would be very order shot Town FC. Um, you know, back in April, this was when Tommy shuffled the pack, wasn't it? And he put a line out that everyone was thinking, what on earth is this? But it was when we were struggling for form, struggling for goals. You know, it, it was a tactical masterstroke. We had a bit of luck on that night, but managed to sneak a 1-0. So maybe there's uh, there's some optimism in me for Saturday. But um, equally, yeah, you, f- you fear a bit. I see, yeah, Bashley lineup. We were called Pat Nash from Farnham Town and he's playing tonight against Bashley. I, I'd assume that he's just been recalled as cover that Yordi's going to perhaps be out for a, for a little while. Um, but yeah, I'm not hopeful for anyone going up to Gateshead, but uh, you never know. You never know indeed. Yeah, it, it's also worth worth saying we're in a particularly in- crazy streak of long away days, which we've had obviously Hartley, Paul, Bradford, and then Gateshead kind of within t- yeah, two weeks of each other. And anyone going to... A few two... weeks before that. And... Yeah. And then Bashley tonight. Um, <laughs> if, if anyone's gone to any all of those, I mean, fair play to you. Um, but Ash has. Ash, Ash is off to Bashley. Yeah, so, I think yeah. he went to all the others as well. Mm. Yeah, we've got uh, Joe from the pod is flying up to Gateshead on uh, on Saturday. So hopefully we'll get him on next week to talk us through his, his little jaunt up there. Um, yeah, I <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you two. I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm not not optimistic. Um, but I, I do. Well, not I don't enjoy it, but I do enjoy games like this, where it's, there's less expectation. Wildstone was horrible because the entire kind of week leading up to it, I was like, "We've come on, we've got to win, got to win." Need really need three points. Need a good performance. Need a reaction. Um, whereas a gate set away, it's like, okay, well, we can take into account a, a very good opposition and um, those kind of things. So I, I definitely relax a bit more, I think, listening and following. Um, Seems like an odd thing to say in the National League, but it's as close as you can get to a free hit, I think, in the National League as, as any other game. Like obviously, if it's a heavy defeat, the fans will be unhappy and continue to be worried. But I think based on form, both for Gateshead and Aldershot, everyone will be expecting a defeat. So anything, you know, anything more positive than that, I think, would be a good result. Mm. I was calling away games free hits last year. I think probably <laughs> Gateshead away last year. I was like, it's free hit. And we were we were pretty competent. It was nice <laughs> top top you know top half team last year. Um, so yeah, I can I can subscribe to a bit of free hit action. Um, yeah, the the other kind of updates. Um, Hayden Vaughan is back for a bit. It seems, um, and Emmanuel Madger is out on loan for a month um, after making three kind of cameo appearances um, in his return from injury. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully they will, they'll get some minutes. I mean, I, I don't think we've seen enough of enough of Hayden Vaughan. Um, the only thing I can remember is him kind of falling over the ball that time um, in one of the home games. Um, has anyone got any? Any other any other business to uh, to add for this week? No, not from here. No, no. What like we've done done Just pretty well we, there. Hope we bring in some new new players uh, or turn the tide. Yes. How about you, Ian? Yeah, I'm just wondering if if yeah, the, there's been sort of deals scouring the loan market, trying to get out his contact book. Um, hopefully, there won't be too many more ex Kings Lynn making our way and we try and be a little bit more imaginative and find someone but it is difficult because again if people are playing well they're going to be um in their particular 11 for whatever it is their first club and we've got to yeah hope that perhaps there's somebody in league two that's um needs some minutes or something like that and just can come and inspire sort of like danny lopez type galvanization that's what we need is, is, is kind of that's the sort of thing we need we just need like yeah alone just to spark a bit of life and in, back into the side i think yeah yeah and obviously i, I mean charlie I, I didn't mention it when you mentioned him but the um well, Kwame thomas met, we got mentioned earlier but he, he i think he scored the goal at gates didn't he it's in that <laughs> he did. He did. in yeah. april so yeah yes let's hope let's hope um well, we're hoping to get Jenkins back soon, I believe, as well. So that that would be nice to have 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 a. Well, it'd be nice to have a, a set five at the back that we're going to see every week. But I I don't think I've seen the same five two games in a row recently. The trouble is at, at the minute with all the shot that because of the struggles, everyone that's missing at the moment is sort of either seen as the answer to the problems or being like possibly better than they are so obviously people have been very surprised and dismayed even that madge has gone on loan when they're thinking well why don't you just give him some minutes for us see what he can do um and the worry is though if you play these people and the form doesn't improve then you think oh god well, we really we really really are I'm just gonna pop in right now and say old shot four nil up at half time so i'm just gonna put it go on a limb and say we've probably won in the Hampshire Cup, but don't hold it against me if uh, if we end up throwing that away. 